Alright, super. So, here's where we left off. Uh, you guys made your way after hanging out in uh, Sandpoint. You, uh, you got to know some of the residents, including Horny Chuck, <laughs> Mayor Deverin, and, uh, and the, ma uh, and the uh, constable of the town. And uh, they kind of convinced you guys, based on a, uh, a kid who had disappeared, and uh, after months of like, you know, different livestock and stuff, finally it, uh, they realized something sinister was going on, right? And uh, somebody had found this black fang. It was exaggerated that it was like as long as a man, but when you finally got your hands on it, it was like, what, like six inches long, I think we said. Um, and uh, so you guys... Some are longer than others. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you make your way up here, and you guys are investigating a, uh, a statue, and as you're kind of getting ready to maybe enter, uh, Frick and Frack uh, jump out. And, uh, and attack you guys, and for the first time, as a group of adventurers, um, you're kind of uh, you're kind of bonded by the uh, the carnage, the carnage, the theater of combat. You'll notice on your screens that I've added uh, pools of blood beneath uh, Frick and Frack. Ooh, nice! Um, just a nice visual touch for you guys. Um, so that's uh, that's kind of where we left off. Um, I, one important detail: I think Leo, the cleric, reached his hands into a. a big pile of uh, goblin shit and extracted a key <laughs> that you Naturally. guys then used to uh, to basically pull out um, uh, open a, uh, a chest that uh, included a uh, masterwork dagger who got their who, who got their hands on that one uh, uh, didn't did we figure out the stats or as good as any of our weapons no I don't think we did I thought a masterwork dagger would be an upgrade for somebody. Daviak. Yeah. I think he's. I thought, I thought my rapier was better. Oh yeah, I guess if a dagger time. is a one d four, and the damage on the rapier is a little bit higher. So you would have a. Yeah, one d six. You'd have an improved chance to hit with uh, the masterwork dagger. What well, it doesn't increase damage, but it does increase because of its fine workmanship. It uh, apparently is easier to handle and therefore it's easier to hit with it. So you get a plus one to hit. So I have plus three to attack on my right here. Yeah. So I think you'd take that plus three and you'd add another one to it. No, the right here itself has plus three. So it's better than the dagger. Okay, so... Um, what, what else is in A uh, small ruby worth 50 gold pieces, okay. a uh, small stack of gold, about 20 gold pieces, and uh, a glass uh, vial with some orange liquid in there. I think we encouraged um, our friend Vendi to cast uh, Detect Magic on that, and it was revealed to be a potion of Cure Light Wounds. That's right. Good job, Vendi. Yeah, no problem. Yes. So you guys have, um, you kind of have that... Uh, to divvy up, and uh, ultimately, you guys have rested the the evening here in this spot. Uh, it kind of stinks, but um, you're uh, you basically recovered from the scratches and knocks that you might have taken in your battle with Frick and Frack. Um, who's going to grab that cure light wounds? That might come in handy in a battle. Um, I should probably take. Do we want Leo to grab that since he's got low hit points? Uh, Leo, or it sounded like uh, Benel wanted to grab it. Yeah, e either one of those two, I would say. Somebody switched it. Either, either Vendi or Leo. Vendi, since Leo's just kind of a miscellaneous then. Yeah. All right, super. Hey, Scott, can I get uh, maybe a volume check on, on your side? Are you guys on the oh, same I'm, mic? I'm broadcasting through Dave's mic. Okay. Maybe you, you can hear me all your days. Yeah, much clearer there. Maybe you guys can snuggle up. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> I'm already sitting on his lap. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, the only place to go is this corridor um, uh, to the right. Um, I guess we'll call that to the east. Uh, that um, has uh, a pair of stone doors. Um, as uh, as you approach. Uh, you can see pretty fine workmanship on those doors, and um, I presume that you guys want to push on through. 
Yes. Are they locked or are they open? Uh, they are open, and as uh, Torben pushes on them, uh, they glide open. Oh, easy. They glide open. It seems like uh, almost like magical hinges, just perfectly quiet and still. And uh, you guys walk into this room, and uh, in this room, uh, in the center of the room, is, uh, is, a, is a fountain. And from this fountain um, is kind of a golden-hued light uh, that's kind of emanating from the water itself. Um, imagine, like, at sunset, like, you know, the, the sun, like, real deep sunset, the, the sun kind of glistening off the water. It, it's, it's throwing off enough light to light up the room. Um, and, uh, and in that light, you can notice that uh, the stonework around the edge of the, uh, uh, the fountain is covered in, uh, in runes, uh, look to be um, elven runes. Um, maybe get a perception check from everybody? Yeah. Oh, nice. Nine. <laughs> uh, nine. It's a classic. Got it. Eighteen. I'm rolling, I'm rolling for perception. You Leo roll. gets a sixteen. Does that roll for initiative? So what you want to do is open up on the left hand side. You see that uh, dice? Yes. You're going to want to roll uh, the d20, and from your character sheet. You wanted to uh, pull in like your perception buff. Scroll all the way down. Well, see how there's a perception. Uh, or yeah, yeah, I always turn them off. Do you know what I mean? So you got to do a little bit of pre programming to make that work. Yeah. Well, I rolled a 17. Okay, super. Um, so, oh, so, so, hey, Dave. Um, what you could do is go to the skill page on your character sheet, and there should be a dice icon next to perception. Yeah. Should be at the end of the knowledge section on the skill tab. So tool around with that. We'll take your 17 as gospel for now. Yeah. Um, basically, everybody but Torben um, can hear some, some voices. Uh, coming from the northeast, um, but for now there's the matter of this uh, this fountain in front of you. Uh, which of the characters have uh, knowledge religion? Probably Leo, the cleric. Yeah, Leo's got a class skill in knowledge religion. Okay. Let me roll that up. Yeah, uh, Leo gets the sense that these runes um, they might they might actually have something to say here. Uh, an 11. Uh, Leo takes a stab at it. He's like, ah, no, nothing comes to mind. So, um, yeah, you, you guys, uh, any questions or thoughts about this fountain? Are you interested in investigating further to the northeast? We're, we, you've also got at the um, southwest corner of the room, there's another stone door. So you've got kind of this open passage to the northeast. You've got the fountain that's kind of faintly glowing gold, and you've got a, um, a door to the southwest. This is the door right where I'm standing? That's exactly right. Can I uh, listen at the door to see if I hear anything or sense anything on the other side? Sure. Perception check for me. My perception's plus three. Sweet. Uh, yeah, Daviak, you crushed oh, that. Oh, you, you 27. Don't... You don't hear anything in, in this other room. Um, it is deathly quiet, perfectly still. It, where also, is the gold a perception light check emanating up. from? Is it from the fountain? Or is there a light source in here other than the fountain? Uh, great question. No, uh, no light source. You get the sense that um, kind of a divine energy is, uh, is at play in this fountain. That there's some kind of uh, some, something going on um, with, uh, with the water. Uh, itself. Um, how, how big of a fountain are we talking? Like, what kind of diameter? Um, it's about five feet across. Uh, the, the stonework makes it about eight feet. And is there water actually in it? 
Oh yeah. Um, imagine imagine like a, a two or three tiered um, fountain, and it's kind of bubbling from the top and, and kind of cascading down. As it cascades down, mm -hmm. you see the water. I mean, it's almost like it's dripping sunlight. It's beautiful. Um, you almost feel a little uh, bit. Uh, I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to. Let me let me ask you a question. Are, are, can I dip my hands in there? And... Yeah, absolutely. You dip your hands Maybe in there. Uh, the water is cool. Um, it's it. Uh, can we drink? Yeah, you can you can definitely drink it. Um, <laughs> it's it's water, right? It's. Uh, I'm drinking a lot of it. Just touching it doesn't seem to uh, to do anything. Um, Torben, you kind of pull your hand. What about Leo frolicking around in the fountain? Did that do anything? Uh, Torben, you, you kind of cup your hand and pull the water out, and, and uh, the water continues to glow for about two or three seconds, and then it, it uh, fades over the next three or four seconds. Um, so somehow removing that water, um, the, the, the magical properties of it seem to change. Um, Dave, you're going to drink it, you said? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink it. Excellent. Excellent. I'd like you to roll a ten-sided <laughs> dice. You can either do that in the program, or I've got one right here. Um, where did that little menu come from, where I could choose the ten-sided dice? So the dice on the left-hand side. Oh, I thought if I pressed that. Okay. Uh, taking the ten, I rolled it. A nine. Yeah. Perfect. Um, maybe... Uh, Get a little scratch paper or make a mental note that uh, the uh, the next time you are in combat, you get a plus two bonus to all attack rolls in your next combat. Uh, I am telling the team that um, in the notes, in the chat. Wait, is it uh, to all combat? So, so Torben and Torben and and. Uh... Corbin can obviously see that when he takes a sip of this from this golden fountain that he he just seems to read something that Torbin would want to uh, partake of. So he he cups his hands and takes a nice long draw on the uh, on the fountain water. Let's see that D10 roll, please, or let's hear it. All right, here we hear. D10. Is this it? This is it. Is it? Uh, all right, here we go. So <laughs> yeah, three. I think I should use the odd. So Torvin, um, you're completely expecting uh, to to feel stronger um, and, and maybe see the same kind of effects that Vendi sees, but um, you'll be taking a minus two penalty on all saving throws during your next combat. What? Not all of us. Have the constitution to bear the golden waters. Yeah, you, you, you as you drink it, um, it, why don't we have Leo take another no knowledge religion check, please? Um, he sees the difference between okay. the two to trigger something for him. Is it important to know right now that Vendy's just laughing? 16? Torben right now? 16. Um, apparently Vendy's laughing at Torben. Uh, all of a sudden, it kind, of, it, it kind of snaps into place for Leo. He, he can make out, finally... Um, Maybe there was a chip on one of the uh, one of the runes, and he couldn't really interpret it. All of a sudden, he realizes that this is a uh, a fountain uh, to Desna. Um, listeners to the GCP will will recognize that name. Um, and uh, it, in the inscription below the the goddess's name, it says that um, uh, there's. It's actually written here uh, that. Um, sorry, I'm looking for the text here. Uh, that Desna will offer a boon to those that offer gold. Well, not to uh, throw a wrench into my uh, my stomach pains, but if you look at my character sheet, I think you'll see that under day, I respect Desna. <laughs> that's a that, that's a positive for you. Um, not enough to have learned apparently the uh, the runes that would have helped you before you drank it greedily. You, you know, the the thing to imagine is kind of the uh, the Nazis drinking from the Holy Grail at the end of the uh, of the. Uh, <laughs> you chose poorly. Yeah, you chose poorly. <laughs> um, so yeah, I the, the, the power, but I can't wield it. So Leo, you've got um, you you've kind yeah, of yeah. Leo's feeling kind of thirsty. He wants to take a sip. Okay. Uh, Leo opts not to uh, throw gold, I assume, into the fountain. 
I mean, we have all this gold. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll throw some yeah. gold in. Uh, all right, Leo, roll a uh, d10 and add five to your roll. Why, why is the five? For the gold. Wow. All right, so that's a 11. All right. Um, the uh, Leo gets to choose a plus two bonus on attack rolls or saving throws or to armor class and receives this bonus for the rest of the adventure. What? what? For the rest of this. So we want to go armor class or saving throws for Leo? Armor class. Okay, so we're going to go plus armor class for Leo. I mean, let me double check his current armor class. He's at 14 to begin with, so I'll put him at 16. Then uh, that keep our healer safe. Saving throw is if um, somebody poisons you, and it's like a test to see if your guts can withstand, um, or if somebody tries to scare you, like you know, something super freaky. It's a, it's a check to see if your mind right. is strong enough. Right. Oh, my mind is strong enough. Throw my chalk in there. <laughs> All right, I think, I think we're going to go with that AC bonus for Leo. All right, mark that down. That's a plus two through the end of the adventure. What's the AC? That's okay. That's your armor count. That's how hard you are to And hit. then, uh, Davyak, he, he hates to get rid of his gold, but he'll toss one in and take a sip as well. Okay. Plus five to your roll. Fifteen. Ooh. Okay, so plus two to attack rolls, saving throws, or armor count for Daviok as well through the rest of the. Uh, I'll definitely take uh, attack bonus. Okay. Can I so Corbin is seeing all this. Uh, <laughs> action, and he's wondering, you know, he, he he had some immediate cramps when he took a sip, but he's wondering if if maybe uh, he he got a little bold that he could throw some some gold into the fountain or. Maybe even dip the, the blade of his longsword in there and, and maybe try to get some divine influence. Go for it. So do I, uh, should I roll something? What should I do? Uh, go ahead and uh, roll a d10. So what are you doing, dipping your blade in? I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to flick a gold piece in there, show some respect, and then I'm going to gently dip my longsword blade into the fountain. Alright. Roll a d10, roll. give yourself a plus 5. You got a 10. So 15? 15. Okay. You you pull your sword out, um, and uh, the, <laughs> the water um, in my head. kind of coalesces, uh, or, or not coalesces, but kind of drips onto the ground around your feet. Oh, just um, you can change your to sword glows. Your Torben in that drop down menu the bottom. So all your text will come up as Torben says. Sorry. Well, say that again. No sweat. You pull your sword out and uh, hope, you, you look at very hopefully at this kind of gold um, glow that's coming off of your sword. And uh, you're very excited for about that three or four or five seconds as the water kind of slowly drips off. Um, but unfortunately, the, uh, the glow um, stops and, and effectively you, you notice nothing about your weapon. All right. <laughs> Why has Des not abandoned you? Des hates me. Sort of uh, bugged at this point that uh, all of the the divine blessings that come from casting in gold happened after he was brave enough to first drink mm -hmm. from the water. Yeah. And would now like his chance at some favor from the gods by throwing some gold in this bitch. All right. So you throw a ten plus five. Yeah. Can I do, okay. Go ahead and roll your dice. Yeah, let me have the five. Are you drinking or are you dipping your toes in? What are you doing? Uh, I'm going to take another drink. Okay. And hope some one of these duration bonuses. Roll it. Oh, Get, getting greedy there, Bendy. An 11? Yeah. Uh, as you drink it, uh, you notice no further effects. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know everything. Thank you.